What's up guys? What's up, you guys? might recognize this face. If you watch our channel, I'm sure you watch his. This Austin. is Austin from Training Tall. Yes. We are in the same place at the same time. The biggest rowing event on the West Coast, the yeah, San Diego and, Crew Classic. And we just happened to race each other yesterday, yeah. which is, by the way, this is not doing me any favors with like an upshot. It's very clear how much taller you oh, are than I Oh, I was going to say, you look actually almost, <laughs> you look the same height in this almost. I feel like maybe if I did like, up, uh, no, that makes it worse. What's up, man? How you doing? Doing all right. What's up, guys? Austin back with another video. And today we're, I'm here with Shane Farmer. Dark Horse Rowing, this is like a colliding of two YouTube channels. It was meant to be. It was meant to be. And, you know, just we are here at the San Diego Crew Classic, basically the biggest rowing event on the West Coast. It's just a gathering of tons of different teams from high school teams to college teams and master's teams. You walk around and run into Olympians and pretty much everyone in the rowing scene. Just a lot of very tall, fit people wearing spandex everywhere. It's basically From any age category. Yeah, it's one of the best opportunities to just walk around in spandex all day long. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> so today we just wanted to, you know, just kind of meet up and just because this was a great opportunity, you know, we I'm based out in Sacramento and Shane's in San Diego, but we were both able to come together for this. And so we wanted to just take some time to, you know, chat some stuff. Yeah, we felt it's one of those like we've watched each other's channels. We've talked via email. We've connected before. We and know we have a shared audience. Yeah, so many of you guys watch both of our videos that we we knew we were both going to be here in San Diego, and it just seemed silly not to. And we raced against each other yesterday. Yes, we did. <laughs> San Diego crushed us, but it <laughs> but, was all fun. And all good but and also we got excluded. So yeah. I, I didn't want to bring it know. up. I was going to say, how'd your final go? <laughs> but it didn't happen. Okay, to be fair. It was a great race, and we'll just call it that. Yeah, you guys, um, it was you a guys look solid. It was fun being out there, um, but I still just can't believe that we are like both here. Yeah, this is great. I yeah. mean, this is. You, you, there are like two. There are like three of us in the world that do this. Yeah, like a, a YouTube channel about rowing that people actually watch. We are two of the three. Actually, we might just be two of the two. I think it's two of the. Two. I don't yeah, know that there's the anybody. Two. Yeah. We had no idea at first, but yeah, we both ended up racing in the collegiate alumni category. So basically those that had graduated from college really trying to relive the glory days, I guess. That's sort of, I guess, the main, main thing we wanted to talk about today is maybe why you, someone who maybe uses the rowing machine as part of their general fitness routine or uses the rowing machine a lot, why you should get an opportunity to go out into a boat. Because honestly, it's just a, it's a totally different experience. Yeah, I've always likened it to when you are on a rower, it's like learning to ride a four-wheeler, yeah. right? Like you understand how the pedals work. You have a seat to sit on, so you get comfortable with that. You have handlebars and you like, you understand the system of like forward propulsion. Then taking that and trying to learn how to ride a unicycle. Yeah, is like taking all take, the training wheels right, off. Yeah, it's like going from rowing on an erg to rowing on the water. It becomes infinitely more complicated, but so much more rewarding. Very rewarding. And but and when you do break it down, it does, you know, they're both very, very similar. But I think one of the biggest things that a lot of people don't think about when using the rower is, you know, when you get tired, yeah. uh, you can let the form slack a little right. bit, right? You can kind of, you know, you can let your shoulder, you can let your shoulders drop more and you can round yourself and, but and in a boat, want, you can even like ease off the throttle. Yeah. I mean, you, you can full on stop. But what happens want. when you do that in a boat? Everyone notices. Yeah. Everyone notices. You can't hide. No, you can't do it. And there's something, you know, when you're in a boat, because in rowing, there's a bunch of different boat classes. You know, they've got boats as small as singles, where someone is just rowing in the boat by themselves to boats as big as eights, with eight guys rowing and then one coxswain, someone that steers the boat and basically calls the commands throughout either a practice or a race. And when you're rowing with other people, you have to be on your game. Like, you, you can't, if you slack, Everyone can feel that. Yeah, it's, everyone can um, feel it. I think that's the ultimate pressure of being in rowing, but also what's rewarding is because you share pain, blood, sweat, tears, right? All those things that develop character in somebody. Absolutely. That's I think that's what creates such a strong bond and such a strong value behind actually getting on the water. So I know like most both of us kind of talk primarily about just the rowing machine as a training tool. Yeah. Right? And Rarely do we get into the like, hey, let's get on the water because yeah. A, that's a lot harder to film. Yep. Uh, B, it's 
even more harder. It's even more hard because it's just you out there. It's yep. like you'd need a camera crew, you'd need other boats. Yeah. And frankly, it's it's a little bit more inaccessible. It is. But and to other people too. It's just yeah. you know, no one no one's got a boat. Not everyone has a boat lying around. Exactly. Or access to a nearby club. So. Yeah. So getting started, it, I feel like a lot of people feel there are barriers to entry, um, but often it's not as bad as you would think. Oh, absolutely. You know, considering that most rowing club programs, they have, it's called master, master's rowing, which is so funny because master's always sounds like, you know, you're Matt, you're yeah. a professional rower, yeah. but you know, um, <laughs> they have master's novices, which means essentially you're just an adult that's not in college and that isn't collegiately eligible, but as a novice, a first year rower, you would be put together with a bunch of adults that also have no idea what they're doing. Yeah. And you'd have a huge advantage though if you knew how to use the rowing machine because even even then a lot of adults that join a master's program don't even know what an erg is. They right. don't even know how to use a rowing machine. And let alone have the fitness to be able to move a boat. Yeah. So if you, that's, you know, I think that's why the, train, the, the erg can be such a great tool to start. Absolutely. Is because it helps you develop the fitness and it, it there's, there's a value to learning how to ride that four-wheeler before Absolutely. you get onto a unicycle, right? You have to understand how to move with it. And then, yeah, when you take the training wheels off, you start to learn all the nuances of it. But um, you can come to it having learned how to use the, the erg or the rower as a training tool. And rowing on the water can be that much easier because of it. Totally. We've actually, I've actually done that with a couple of my crews, my crews, my indoor rowing club here in San Diego. Um, on occasion, I'll bring them out to the water for a day on the water. That's awesome. To learn what it's like to have an oar in their hands. Yeah, and it's a, you know it is a, it is a totally different experience. But yeah, the rowing machine it it really sets the foundation. Yeah. But with rowing, masters rowing in general, you know, you think about like if, okay, what if you join like an adult soccer team? You'd be with a bunch of people that have soccer. played soccer their whole lives. Yeah. But when you join a rowing t a rowing masters program, especially a novice team, no one knows what they're doing. So everyone's sort of on that same baseline level and I think there's a that 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 like you said it, it's not as big of a barrier to entry as you might think it would be and it's not I think a lot of people also see rowing as I mean I'm not like doing justice for like making this seem in, uh, accessible to people by wearing a <laughs> rowing yeah. blazer yeah. right so like this is just a tradition in rowing is that teams have blazers that are representative of their, it's like wearing a jersey right yeah. or like college sure. sweatshirt this is our college sweatshirt for rowing but when you see this, you're like, oh, what a snob, right? Like, there's no way that I will ever be that or that I'm too far along. I can't, I will, I will never have that. And it's just not true because when you look, and I think part of that too is it costs a lot of money. Yep. I need to have a boat. I don't even know where to start. But if you get into a rowing club that has a learn to row program, it's just like paying a gym membership. It is. It, you don't have to own a boat. You don't need anything crazy. You're, you just pay a gym membership and you show up and they teach you how to row in the water. Yeah. It's far more accessible than people think. And it's, you know, going back to the, the, the team environment I too. I know. <laughs> yeah, I kind of look like just the janky camera guy with my <laughs> gray sweatshirt on, you got that on. Anyway, um, but just, you know, because you, you know, using the rowing, using, using a rower for yourself, you know, it's a great way to improve your fitness and it's a, you know, it's an overall great exercise. But when you're with a team, and that team com camaraderie you make, you know, just that, that social interaction with everyone training for a common goal. I think that's a huge thing too. You know, when it, whether it's a big race or, you know, whatever it is, be, having, knowing that every single person in your boat is working hard to improve with you and together. Like, I mean, I can't think of a sport that really embodies that more than rowing. Yeah. They you know, every sport kind of argues for the, the supremacy of their sport. That's true. That's um, true. And we're a little biased. But, yeah. but. but rowing really does, there is, and I think it's what you talked about at the beginning, like there's so much to coming together and not being able to hide and having to work for everyone else. If you are a standout in rowing, if you are a standout in the boat, you're doing something wrong. Yeah. You want to blend That's as true. much as you can, right? That's you want so to be, true. You just want to emulate what others are doing and not be seen. Yeah. And you want to make the boat go that's without so... anybody knowing that it's you making the boat go. And that's that's very much unlike something like a basketball team, right. you know? And especially, you know, in something like basketball, let's say you have the all-star who gets injured for two weeks yeah. but can come back and be right, you know, back to being the star of the show. In yeah. rowing, you know, the, the fitness aspect of it is so important. You know, if you if you're not committed or if you do take a few weeks off you know you have to earn your spot back yeah. it's not just given to you and there's no 
And like, like you said, we, you, it, the goal is to blend with your teammates. You're not supposed to be the all-star. Yeah, they're, boats are not built around singular individuals. Yeah. The it's, mechanics of, yeah, of the stroke and everything, you, yeah, you, it's not, I agree. The things that make boats move are your ability to do exactly what somebody else is doing. Is for me to do exactly what you do if you're sitting in front of me. Yeah. Like how how close to you can I be in exactly the way we move, the way we breathe, the way our shoulder dips, the way our yeah. hands sit, the way. And these are the nuances, right? The give me goosebumps right now just right? thinking about it. <laughs> just thinking about That's it. Me too. I'm getting chills down my spine. It doesn't help. We. I mean, you guys can't see it right now, but behind us we have all these boats rolling in post race. We're sitting at the the finish line of the Crew Classic, and uh, we're watching all these boats rolling. It kind of puts us in the mood too. Absolutely. And you know, just to think that yes, there are teams that are, you know, just like you think of the top team, the top rowing teams like Cal or Washington, you know, these big dog teams, even down to the smallest club teams, like no matter how fast or slow a boat is or how, you know, it's everyone is working so hard and everyone has put in the time and the effort and everyone is giving their all. And there's just something great about being part of that experience. Yeah. And, I, and something I always like to call out too is I feel like the most underappreciated person in the boat is the coxswain. Oh yeah. And you, most people Absolutely. are like, what? the coxswain's just the person that yells like, row, yeah, row. <laughs> yeah. like that's <laughs> The classic coxswain yeah. call, yeah. yeah but and there's so much more than that. Oh, the coxswain is, in my opinion, the most important person in the boat. Yeah. They're, the, they're, they're basically, I mean, they're kind of like a second coach. Yeah, they're the, they are the race car driver. Yeah. We're just the engine. The engine, yeah, yeah that's, that's a great analogy. I love that. That's, that's like, awesome. They are the ones that have to know the race plan, execute it, watch what the other teams are doing, be able to race the car. And we literally just sit there and shut our brains off. We're not supposed to talk or turn yeah. our heads or worry about what's happening. All you do is think about what's going on. So if that sounds appealing to you, right, just go work hard, put your head down and try to make a group great. Rowing is your sport. Rowing is the sport. Absolutely. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So yes, if you're ever thinking, if you're ever even questioning, should I go try rowing in a boat? You absolutely should. You know, check to see if there's local clubs around you. You might be surprised to know that there's a, you know, a rowing club a couple streets away from where you're living at. Right, so, so let's do this. I don't, you know, we have people from all over the world that watch both our channels, right? So, yeah. but let's throw out some, you've got to know some clubs near you that are like great places to start. Yeah. I know a few. So like, what are some of the better clubs out there that people could go check out that would be inviting to learn to row? Because like see, here in San Diego, we've got, Zlac, Z-L-A-C, yeah. which is a, a women's, it's the oldest women's rowing club in the country. Oh, wow, no kidding. Um, yeah, huh. and it's a, it's a women's only rowing club, incredibly inviting. Um, here we also have, in the South Bay of San Diego, there's Community Rowing San Diego, nice. which I'm, I'm partial, I sit on the board for them, but it's a nonprofit, and their sole goal is to bring rowing to underprivileged communities and youth. So making rowing accessible to people who wouldn't normally have access to rowing. So Community Rowing San Diego, fantastic place to go and just learn the sport for the first time. That's awesome. Yeah, and, and you know, in Sacramento area, I'd say one of the best clubs to get a part of is River City Rowing Club. As it's not, you know, it's not a a top perform, like it's not like one of the top dog programs out there, but as far as their learn to row program is, you know, it's very inviting and very open to those ad adults, especially that are just trying to learn how to row. And then what, Boston, you've got Community Rowing. It's a well-known club for people to get started. Okay. Um, in, you say in Boston? In Boston, okay. community CRI, community okay. rowing. Uh, I forget what the I stands for. I'm gonna guess international. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not too familiar with other with, with other uh, with other accessible rowing clubs across the country. You know, I'm. Yeah, there are plenty out there, but uh, it's just search them out. They're out there. Like I know they're in the Midwest too. We there are plenty. I'm from Minnesota. Yeah, there I mean we got we got Can Kansas out here rowing. Yeah. Kansas is rowing. Yep. You know they're they're out there. <laughs> Absolutely. That's true. Yeah. We have Baja Rowing Club, yeah, Mexico. Mexico. They're they're always a, a regular here at this yeah. race. Like yeah. it's everywhere. You just kind of have to want to find it. I think. Yep. And do yourself a yeah do yourself a favor and look around because it is. You, it's a, just an entirely different perspective of rowing, getting in a boat versus being on the machine. Yeah, completely. Yeah, and it's worth, it's definitely worth the effort to try to make it happen. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome, man. And I think we both realize, like, we share a lot of the same audience. Yeah. Right? A lot of people watch both of our videos. I've seen very similar, co the people that comment on your vids, they yes. comment on mine. I've yep. seen them. And I've had people comment on my videos and say, hey, I just came over here after watching Austin's video. 
So it's like, oh, awesome. And just being able to bridge that community on an online presence, you know, think about it, like 10, 15 years ago, like that's just not, that just wasn't a thing. No, it would never would have happened. We never would have met, we never would have known each other. Right, and I would so much rather like, work with you than work against you because oh, yeah. there are only two of us you know yeah. like there's so much more fun to be had having fun with you guys and for you guys sharing the rowing passion right like let's just get people amped up about this thing as opposed to you know like dividing and conquering totally you know hey, let us know down in the comments below if you came to the San Diego Crew Classic oh uh, yeah and why you didn't come say hi yeah actually so we just had an experience somebody recognized him Yesterday, I had somebody recognize me. Like, this is amazing. Yeah, Wait, we're both penetrating this entire community. How cool is that? It's undescribable. It really is. Yeah, so. that's very true. All right, guys. Well, we just wanted to check in. We're here, Crew Classic, walking around, having a grand old time. We just shot a little video. You'll probably see it over on Austin's uh, channel, and you'll probably see this one. And then we might share some of the same content back and forth and do a little like cross posting. And, and hopefully meet up again real soon. Yeah, absolutely. Because it just was just too, too short of a visit. Too short of a visit, yeah. We, we, uh, we were both quite busy this weekend having all this racing, so I think it would be fun to actually get into a place where our intent is to create something at it'll, the same time. It'll happen. Yeah. It'll happen. I can't believe we're here. I know, yeah. You know, it's with... We're like incepting YouTube channels this right is, now. This is, you know, this is every YouTuber's dream is to collaborate with somebody else, right? <laughs> So, um, yeah, thank you guys for watching it. Shane, it's awesome to, to get a chance to, to meet up like this. And, you know, if you're coming to the Crew Classic next year, oh, yeah. I'll be here next year, too. And who knows where we'll both be. And, um, but, you know, this, is, this has been a great opportunity. So. I, I foresee doing more videos in, together in the future. Totally. We, we only wish we had more time to do more stuff. Yeah. You know, do, maybe True. do some, you know, coach versus coach, coach yeah. erg, erg coach or something. Coach coach. Yeah, we something like that. We just get a blank slate athlete and what can we do with them in an hour? That would be awesome. <laughs> but next time. So, cool, man. All right. All righty, yeah. Pleasure. Good luck racing. Thank you. One Shane's race. racing once again, yeah. All right, yep. yeah, good luck, man. Thank All right, you. and we'll see you guys uh, in our next videos. Yeah. Yeah, take care. <laughs> Bye, guys.